I called the police department to find you. I'm in the phone book. Well, they said they retired you four years ago on a line of duty disability pension. You've got a bullet in you. What do you want? Well, my name is Harlan Garrison. Doesn't that mean anything to you? Well, about four years ago, on Friday, January 18th, around 1.20 a.m., you and another cop got a call on a burglary in progress at a drugstore. When you got there, there were two guys with guns. You got shot, and your partner was killed. I'm the guy that shot you. What do you want? This is $1,400 I've saved up to uh, pay for an operation to have the bullet taken out of you. <laughs> Sorry I hit you, but don't try to jump me like that again. You're pretty fast for a big man. You scared the hell out of me. Oh, what do you want? Why don't you take a minute to pull yourself you together? You come here with a gun to offer me conscience money for an operation. You could have put that in an envelope and dropped it in the mailbox. No, I couldn't do that. I had to talk to you. What for? Will you let me explain, please? I don't know you any favors. Now, you can't judge me now. I'm like two different guys. Who I am now and who I was when I shot you are two completely different guys. Ten different guys you did or you didn't. Look, I don't have anywhere else I can turn. Just listen to me, will you? What's that gonna cost you? Okay, now, you're a private detective, right? I wanna hire you to, well, help me find the guy who was in the drugstore with me that night. He's trying to kill me. What's your problem? He wants to kill you. He'll find you. Well, see, uh, he doesn't do things himself anymore. He sends people. He put out a contract on me, and uh, they found me once already. I'm trying to stay out of sight, just to stay alive. What's he after you for? He's afraid I might turn him in. Why didn't he worry about that up till now? Well, I don't know. Maybe he did, but he didn't know where I was. I joined the Army about four years ago, and uh, I spent the last two years in Vietnam. I just got out three weeks ago. What's his name? His name is Walter Shearer. Well, if Walter didn't know you were in the Army, how does he know you're out? I didn't keep it a secret. You didn't keep it a secret from who? Lots of people. Well, see, I was looking for this girl. You find it? Yeah, I found it. So? Well, she's living with Walter now. I guess she told him that she saw me. And where she's at? Yeah, and where she saw me. What's her name? Marilyn Bedstrom. What are you looking for her for? She's been on my mind. I guess I owe her something. You see, she's a junkie. We went to college together. I'm the one that uh, turned around in the first place and got her hooked on the hard stuff. Uh, don't get too nervous. There's a piece of paper and a pencil in there. Put down where I can reach you. Put down your phone number if you got a phone. Where you went to college. Anything else you think I ought to know? 
Then take your time. Think about it. And go out quietly and don't wake me up again. What's that? It's a vacuum cleaner. What's it doing here? It's mine. I'm going to vacuum. Going to vacuum what? I'm going to vacuum this room because I can't stand the dust in it. Ah, oh, hey, listen, don't get domestic on me. The word domestic really bugs you, doesn't it? I lead a good life. I don't want to change. I will not change your life. I will take my vacuum cleaner home with me when I'm finished. I will only vacuum this room because the dust in here makes me sneeze. And, uh, we can't have that, can we? Oh, what happened? The door was open. The guy came in with a gun. Giving out money samples. But you didn't want any, so you threw them away, right? Something like that. Hey, leave it there. You'll have a dirty floor. I can't vacuum a floor with money all over it. I haven't decided I want to keep it yet. Even if I pick it up? Lend me 20 bucks, will you? Do you have any friends? Friends? I was just wondering if they like you. Turner in the college. Just keep pushing the old records back and making room for the new ones. Now, 
Harlan Garrison and Marilyn Mitchell are both chem majors. Chemistry. And uh, the other man you asked me about, uh, Walter Shearer. Shearer was in the School for Business Administration. Garrison dropped out in his junior, the last half of his junior year, and Miss Mitchell dropped out about the same time. Mr. Shearer has his bachelor's degree in biz ed. Business administration. Right. Listen, um, the term among professors isn't the same as students, and uh, the teaching staff has tenure, so there'll probably still be some professors around. How old are you? Nineteen. Did you ever go fishing? I love to. And sometimes when you go fishing, you catch little fish. Mm. Can't keep those, you gotta throw them back if they're too young. You have to? It's a pity. Strangely enough, I do remember, sure. I really don't know why he was an ordinary student. Nice kid, but I remember him. Didn't have any idea where I could find him now, would you? Sometimes you keep in touch with certain students. Not sure, not in my case. It's very funny, I remember that I remember him. And I remember that there was absolutely nothing out of the ordinary about him. That's not exactly what you wanted to know, is it? Nope. Garrison is the one who disappointed me. Bedstrom was bright. Garrison was the one that disappointed me. You know, he was the kind of a kid that would win the Nobel Prize, you know, when he got his full growth. Do you have a forwarding address in either one of them? Do you know anything about chemistry? Not much. Too bad you could give yourself a treat. Garrison wrote a paper. It's probably still in the stacks in the library. You wouldn't believe the work. Insight, insight. Can I uh, get you anything else, Mr. Orwell? How do you memorize things? I guess I read them over and over. I write them down. Aspects of crystalline and forming structure with respect to molecular linkages of certain alkaloids and the synthesis thereof by Harlan Garrison and Marilyn Bedstrom. That's it. You got a drill? Yeah. What? What's your major? American history. Civil War. You wrote a paper on Robert E. Lee. Would you put your girl's name on it? Well, she helped me work on it. Suppose I wanted to fix. Where would I find a pusher? Hey, hey, now, I don't use drugs. That's not what I ask you. I'm trying to find a pusher. I don't know. You know. You just think it's too dangerous to tell me. Lieutenant Granger. This is Harry Orwell. You okay? Yeah, a guy by the name of Harlan Garrison says he spent the last two years in the army. Well, the guy's here, I want to see you. Yeah, hold on. Wait a minute. You're still going to have to wait your turn. Sit down over there. Are you really interested in sitting down, Sergeant? Please sit down over there. You got an address for him? Yeah, 4217 Greenway. I'll call you. Okay.
What happened? Some kind of a bomb. Well, I'm looking for a guy. His name is Garrison. He lives in there. This is a woman. blasted a wall between two apartments over here. I still see the smoke. There's a lot of debris over here. The firemen have it pretty much under control. The police have cordoned off uh, the area over here. 63-year-old Mary Stevens was killed while she was taking a nap, a customary nap that she uh, took in the afternoon. And either the explosion or the fire just uh, seared her The guy that was living in, he wasn't home. The explosion went right through the walls, right in the next apartment. Killed a the woman there. She was home. Bronze star. Can you get two of these? Mazatlan, round trip. What's the day? Last week. He went and came back in two days. I picked up your money. Somebody exploded a bomb in my bedroom. What you said last night was you were trying to keep out of sight to stay alive. You ought to keep track of the things you say to me. I remember them. How come you were in the same place if Marilyn knew where it was? I took a chance staying there in case she decided she wanted to talk to me again. You know, I found this in your car. I guess you remember how it got there, don't you? Because Marilyn knew where you were. I knew that, but I had to take a chance. Well, in the meantime, because you're stupid, some woman you don't even know her name next door to you was killed. Here, yeah, put this on a chain and give it to Marilyn for a souvenir. This is Harry. I got your make on Garrison. Right. 
Uh, how about that bomb that just went off in his apartment? You know about that? Yeah, I know about it. I have the first check from the Pentagon. Nothing unusual. Good record, expert rifleman. Good conduct medal, leadership, staff sergeant. Two bronze stars, four years. Two in Vietnam, no pot, no pills, no heroin. Honorable discharge. What do you want to, Harry? I'm trying to find out. I checked your army record. It's clean. So far as they can see, anyway. Why were you in Mazatlan last week? I heard Walter and Marilyn went down there. I went down there after them. Were they? By the time I got there, they were gone. I'm going to park you in a hotel where you'll be pretty safe and so will the people around you. I'll be able to find you when I want you. Where'd you find the pusher? Huh? When you started on the dope scene. Oh. Well, there was a bar a couple blocks off campus called Howie's. I think it's still there. And uh, there was a telephone in the men's room. And on the wall next to the phone was a message that read, do you want to take a trip? Call Joe, the travel agent, and a phone number. Were you rich? Who? And you had to pay for your habits. There were three of you to support. Well, Walter had some money for a while and didn't share with us. See, his old man owned a paint factory. Whenever he had a good year, he put some money in Walter's pocket, too. He was a good old guy, but he died. Naturally, Walter inherited everything, but then the creditors came in with their lawyers and tied it all up. It was a paint factory, but it didn't make paint. It didn't make money. It just stood there. It's probably still standing there. What'd you do after that? He shared whatever we could steal. What's that? Well, that's my spine. And that's your bullet. I'm sorry, you have reached a disconnected number. Please be sure you are dialing the right number and are dialing correctly. This is a recording. What's his name? Stuart? Right. Stuart, I got a problem I want you to help me with. My problem is that I'm looking for Joe, the travel agent, and the number on the wall is not the right number anymore. No, that's not your problem. Your problem is they don't have any telephones in heaven. You go to heaven? Some say yes. Some say no, but wherever you went, there are no telephones there. Why don't you give me a beer while I think about what to do about it? The thing between a man and a woman isn't if they know each other, it's chemistry. They can get to know each other later. Do it now that Joe is dead. Who's Joe these days? Back of your head is first class. Stuart? You didn't answer my question. 
Don't allow anybody behind the bar. Well, what happens if the sun keeps shining day after day after day and people get bored looking at the sun? If there's no travel agent, what happens if they want to see some snow? Look, we don't allow people behind the bar. Well, I might not be people. I might be a friend of Harlan Garrison. Be a nice guy. How about somebody who's a friend of Walter Shearer? You're making my life hard. You got a match? Pencil. You have a phone number, don't you? Stuart? This is where you can find me when you want me. In case anybody wants to know who, Harry Orwell, that's who. You have a car, don't you? I don't, so it works out right. We'll go together. Yeah? Dollar 85. It's Dutch. Don't go away. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Two, three, two, oh, seven. Right on, Stu. This is where we get the supper. I do the cooking, and you get the fixings. Dutch. I better go in first and turn on the lights. Well, I don't know, Stuart. I don't know what kind of friends he has. I don't know what they think is fun. It's nice in here. Pittsburgh deep in Bengals territory. Back goes Terry Branch on a throw. Looks left, bumps once, fires into the end zone. You know what I don't know? I don't know if you're a Democrat or a Republican. Well, what are you? We have never discussed politics. Were you ever married? Who are you? Helen, that's something else you didn't know. Harry. What do you do for a living, Helen? I'm a secretary to a file statistician. Well, I hope that pays well. Not enough for two. You think that was a proposal? And what does a biostatistician do? Well, this particular one is a marine biostatistician. And what he does is he worries about fish population. So what do you do while he's worrying about fish? I type and I file. Now it's time for me to go home. And then what? Then I'm my own man. You don't look like a man.
I suddenly decided I wanted to get to know you better. What time is it? It's ten past one. Not the pants are full. Why don't you put down the pants and go in the kitchen and make me a cup of coffee? Harry Orwell. This is Stuart. You want to see some snow? Go to the online drive in at Wilshire and Lennox right now. Do you use your car to go to work in? Yes. What time do you have to leave to get there? At about 25 to 9. Now give me your car keys. I'm not back by 25 minutes to nine. Take a taxi. But they can give you a receipt. Business travel's deductible. And lock the door behind me. You better not drink that now. You won't be able to sleep. I got a car, I'll follow you. What's the matter? I'll get you where you're supposed to go. Where's your cab? A what? I thought you were going to be a uniform chauffeur. He doesn't want to ride with us. He wants to follow us in his own car. He'll be sitting on a license plate all the way. It'll be engraved in his head. figure it out. Coffee black. I got a message. You were looking for a pusher. Well, I'm not a pusher. I hope you're not disappointed. Oh, excuse me, Wick. Hello. Hola. Ya la tienen. 
Ah, bueno, bueno. No, 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 no. Al mismo precio. 25 el kilo. No se abro, ¿eh? Deja algo para mí. What are you doing? Squeezing my blood, huh? 1250. Sí. Sí, sí. Done. It's a big world of international business. 24 time zones all over the world. Somebody's awake someplace day and night. Seguro, seguro. Ok. I, uh, went to school with Garrison and, um, sure. I got curious why you were dropping the names. I mean, it didn't fit. What do you want to push her for? You're not a user. What are you, a cop? Guy wants me to look for a lady with a habit I thought I could find it that way through a pusher. What's your name? Marilyn Benson. Mm. Look, uh, will you excuse me? I want to get some of this stuff off my hands. Huh? What cost 25 a kilo? Uh, well, well, a drug? I think so. Uh, uh, where, where? Oh, on the street? I don't know. There's one guy who was talking Spanish to another guy offering uh, 25 a kilo, and he'd do the transportation. No. Well, what was he buying? Um, uh, morphine base. What's that? You can't buy morphine base in the USA. Well, what is it? Uh, we use it to make heroin. How do they do that? Do what? Make heroin. Do you know how to make heroin? Oh, Harry, I'm sleeping. Oh, hey, why don't you make some for me? It's illegal. I'll meet you at your lab in half an hour. You took advantage of me. What about the kind of friend that wakes you up and asks for money? Wouldn't bother me. I haven't got any money. <laughs> yeah, here we are. Now you put these on, Harry. Okay. Now we start with the opium poppy. Papavis omniferum. They cut the seed pods and use the sap from that. It used to come mostly from Turkey, but now it comes from the Golden Triangle. Laos, Cambodia, and Vietnam. The sap is turned into a morphine base. It can come in two ways. It can be compressed into a block like this, 999, 
That means it comes from the Orient. Oh, it can come like this. This is Marseille stuff. Is it always red? That's the color. This stuff here is worth about $25 a kilo. Now, a kilo is about two pounds. That makes it $12.5 per pound. When it's processed into heroin in Marseille, it's about 97% pure. It's worth about $3,000 a kilo. By the time it's smuggled over here, diluted for a retail trade, it's worth the United States street value, $300,000 a pound. Of course, we don't worry too much about being smuggled here in this form. It's too bulky. <laughs> and besides, it'd be only one 250th of one 100th one of the profit. Suppose they processed it here. Well, why for? It takes tons of this stuff to make pounds of heroin. It's too bulky to get through the customs and to hide. That's what you're not looking for, so wouldn't that make it easier? OK, but once you do get it past the customs, past the Coast Guard, past the narcs, past everybody, well, you've got a lot of problems. First problem is use fantastic amounts of electric power, and it shows up on the meter. Oh, I don't mean to make a mountain out of a molehill or anything, but they do get it in France. They tap the power lines and steal the current without leaving a trace. It's not easy. Can't be done. <laughs> OK? OK, so far. Next problem. Acetic and hydrogen. It's an acid. It's used to make fertilizers and plastics. It is a commercial product. The only trouble is it's hard to get rid of it. That's the problem. And you use, oh, twice the amount of acetic and hydrate to make one kilo of morphine. And uh, then we have to dilute it with water. The only trouble is you have to get rid of the water. And if you pour it down the sink, it goes out into the sewerage system. It could be backtracked right to your own sink. Well, they solved that problem in Marseille. Oh, yes, they solved it in Marseille, all right. They use extra long hoses to let it stretch out into the marshes, the yeah. fields, and so on. Next problem. Next problem is acetic and hydrogen again. It blows up. It doesn't do that all the time. Oh, no, not all the time, only when you make a mistake. Well, the risks are high, but the profit's good. Oh, there's no doubt about that. So, well, finally. Oh, oh, there are a couple of last little problems. For example, you know, this stuff here does have a tendency to eat away the linings of your eyelids. Here we have the goggles. Also, we have to be careful, very damn careful, what with all this morphine dust and heroin dust floating around while you're changing from one thing to the other. You have to be careful, or you might become addicted. We have respirators. Mm -hmm. You sure you want to go ahead with this? Yeah. Why? Why do people go to museums? Oh. Okay, but no. percent pure heroin, a regular junkie's daydream. Well, go ahead, taste it. Nice and bitter, very pure. You sweeten that up a little milk sugar, according to greed, and you got what they buy on the street. 
I read a chemistry paper this morning by a couple of college kids. Aspects of crystalline and forming structure with respect to molecular linkages of certain alkaloids and the synthesis thereof. Has a nice ring to it. Well, doesn't it mean anything to you? Sounds like heavy stuff to me. I remember somewhere that heroin is an alkaloid. So is nicotine. Is it? It'd been much simpler for me to make you a pack of cigarettes. But then I wouldn't know how to find Walter Sheard. I never knew that Walter Shear was on your mind. Didn't I mention it? You never did. You certainly know how to keep a secret, Harry. Well, you see, you told me anyway. How about that? How much more informative I could have been if I'd known who Walter Shear was? You know, a secretary to a marine biostatistician whose name is Helen? I doubt it. Why? You just took a taxi to work. Armin Shearer owned a paint factory at 38763 Mission. Died about six years ago. That him? Well, it sounds like it. About three months ago, they got a new permit to handle volatile chemicals. That's one. This is Harry Orwell. I put a guy in 1105 yesterday. I want you to give him this message 20 minutes from now. Tell him they're making paint again in Walter's father's paint factory. Walter's father's paint factory. That's good. 20 minutes from now. 19, starting now.
right here. Don't turn around. Get your hands up. Go, go, go! 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 Hello, Walter. Oh, wow. Yeah. You in a hurry? <laughs> yeah, sort of. Yeah. Holland, uh, let me go, huh? No, I'm afraid I can't do that, Walter. You're blind. I just hope that you're blind. Marilyn's in there. What's gonna be okay? What you gonna do? Watch it all backwards? Would you take those cuffs off, please? What are you doing? What are, you saying? What are these for? Hey! What is this for? Because on Friday, January 18th, at about 1.20 in the morning, four years ago, you and a friend broke into a drugstore to rob it. You killed one cop, and you shot another. I didn't kill anyone. Wolf did! I'm not a judge, and I'm not a jury. Not now. It's too late now. No statute of limitation on murder. I trusted you. Arvin Granger. He gave me $1,400 to find somebody by the name of Marilyn Bedstrom. There she is. You know how much smack you can get for 1400 Harlan? Police should be here in about a half an hour. You want to talk to each other? Talk. Slowly. 
Easy, easy. Up. Okay, lower away. They got something. What is it? What is it? It's a sack of red pigment. What? A sack of red pigment. Let's go. Who is it? Police officer, George Fisher. I'm a friend of Harry Orwell's. Uh, uh, this isn't exactly official. Uh, he asked me to bring your car back here for him. It's parked in front of your house. He wants you to know uh, he's very grateful for the use of it. Where is he? He's okay. What happened? Nothing happened. No accidents. The car is fine. I'm not worried about my car. Okay. Okay, what? You're scaring me to death. He had a little accident with his eyes. Not in your car. No accidents Look, in your... I don't give a damn about my car. Uh, well, somebody threw some stuff on his face. Mainly around the eyes and around the eyelids. He has to wear bandages for a couple of days, and he has to wear dark glasses for about a week. And then his eyes will be perfect again in about two or three weeks. Is that the real truth? He's lucky. Good news, a lot of dead ends. That black limousine that you followed when you had that meeting with Shearer, that's registered to him. It's parked in front of his house, and the house is empty. The car that was out in front of the paint factory, you gave us the license plate, that's registered to him, too. Now, it turned up about an hour ago on a supermarket parking lot. The place is closed. That's the only car on the lot. You put somebody watching it, didn't you? Oh, sure, but you know. Yeah, nobody showed up. No. How about Hallis Bond? Well, we brought the bartender in. We got the number that he called Shearer at. Checked it out. It's a legitimate answering service. They take messages for him, and they hold him until he calls in and asks for them. It's another dead end. Well, what about the trip to Mazatlan? We checked the Mexican police. Shearer and the Betson girl were there for three days to set up a morphine-based deal, we think. And then they came back. The Mexican police are checking every contact they had during the three days. It shuts off another hiding place for Shearer right now, that's all. He's still in this country. How do you know? If he isn't, we won't get him. Look, you want me to get somebody to take you home? Yeah. Something will turn up. It's a funny feeling in the dark. What do you want for breakfast? I'll get something to eat downtown. Get that out of here. Where are you going? It is none of your business. How are you going to get there? I want to take a bus. I'll drive you. No, thank you. I've got the whole day. The whole day's together, and this is a little bit much for me right now. What do I owe you? 20 bucks? There you are. See you later. Thanks.
How are you? Go die somewhere. I want Walter Shearer. I hope you get cancer. Oh, don't you want us to catch him? The man who pulls the trigger of a gun is the murderer and no one else. You left him there. It's my mistake. I can see I'm wasting my time and you got your own troubles. You know one of those large brown envelopes? Belongs to her. I'm gonna count it in front of you, and you're gonna be my witness. And I want a receipt. 20, 30, 40. Come on, help me count. 50, 60, 70, yes. 80, 90, 100. What did I do? If he killed Garrison, why didn't he kill the girl, too? Who? He killed Garrison, but he didn't kill the girl. And didn't he have enough time? Fired two shots. There were at least four seconds between each shot. There was at least 10 or 12 seconds after that that I got there. Yeah, he had enough time. I agree. Right. Hey, listen. Are you hungry? How about some breakfast? The question is, if he had enough time, why didn't he kill her, too? Would you trust a junkie that's going to be in custody, cut off from the supply? Never. Well, then why is she still alive? Why? You ask interesting questions, you know that? Well, suppose you're a cop. Somebody gets shot, right? You search your house, right? Why? Well, you get out of warrant and you search your house. Now, come on, think like a policeman. Okay, that's what I do. Suppose she doesn't get shot. Now do you search your house? Thinking like a policeman? Right. Well, where does she live? If you're a policeman, you want to know everything. Her address is on a booking slip, okay? Okay. What for? And for what? Well, if she doesn't get shot, why do I want to search her house? Because that's why he didn't shoot her. Who didn't shoot her? The guy that's hiding in her house. Call headquarters. Why? Because they got the address on a booking slip and I can tell the cab where to take me. Ask for Lieutenant Granger. Oh, <laughs> She lives on the second floor, 223's apartment. This hunch of yours ain't worth four cents. You know that, don't you? You got any place else to look? You see me any place else? Guess that was a heart attack. You got on a stretcher? Must be what the uh, mask was for, right? What'd he do? Call his own ambulance? Nobody with him. Usually somebody goes with you. Wait a minute. Usually somebody goes with you. They go along to bring a toothbrush or hold your hand. Probably lived alone. Where are you going? Guy falls down. He has a heart attack. Right. He calls for help. Who does he call? He calls the police, emergency, the fire department. He doesn't fall down making calm arrangements for a private ambulance. That was a private ambulance. You know, a better way to get by cops looking for you in a private ambulance with the siren going. Hey, hold it.
hurts. It hurts. You'll be all right. We'll stay with you.
drop you off at your place? Uh, I've got transportation. I'll see you. Call first. Joe. Have a nice day. <laughs>